still here. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Salamat po. Okay, sige. Ah uh, ganito. Maganda siguro uh, um I would like to ask each one of you first. What comes to mind when you talk when you hear the word historical distortion? Zuriel. Paano natin pina- what comes to your mind and how do we explain it to people? Uh for me, uh, Professor Chu, well, as a student of history, as a history major, we were taught talaga na revisionism is actually not bad. When we come yes. up with new sources, we revise the history. Because uh, history is walang final talaga. Might be during the 1950s, the 1960s, ito ang narratibo, ito yung narrative natin on this particular event. And mm-hmm. sa kasalukuyan, pag may mga bago tayong sources, we revise the history. Nagbabago kasaysayan. Now, kapag pinag-usapan ng distortion, is binabago talaga. And these are not, not based on facts. Ang nangyayari, mismo ang facts, gumagawa, nagagawa ang facts. Mm-hmm. And nung nag-research nga ako, binabalikan ko yung term na historical distortion. In fact, hindi siya ganun ka-popular before. Right. Compared today, na mas popular yung term na yan, historical distortion and before ang ginagamit na term lang is denialism because of the holocaust uh, holocaust denial, denial. Yeah. Yes. yeah yeah compared to day na historical distortion ang mas preferred term gamitin ng academics gamitin ng mga journalists and everyone even sa mga students na tinuturuan natin ngayon ito ang ginagamit natin is because mismo yung facts of history are being say fabricated they are created to the point na Itong distorted history, ito na yung nagmumukhang tama kumpara dun sa tama. hindi tama na kasaysayan na based talaga sa pagsasaliksik at based talaga sa primary uh, sources or sa or any uh, events na talaga nangyari na may eyewitnesses accounts. So for me, sure. historical distortion, uh, connect natin siya sa pagkikreate talaga. It's really, for me, I like to use the term fiction. <laughs> uh, yung iba ayaw gamitin yung term na fiction. Pero, uh, madami tayo may isip eh, na makoconnect. Ayoko munang sabihin yung word na yon Kasi yun talaga unang pumapasok sa akin. I don't wanna go political agad. Pero sa kasalukuyan kasi, pag sinabing historical distortion, may isa talaga pumapasok sa isip ko na parte ng kasaysayan talaga natin. And siguro, we can discuss more of that later. Uh, hindi right. yung ibang panelists natin. Yeah, sige. Uh, kasi kami ni Zuriel, pareho kaming historiador. ba? Si Ida, nagmumula siya sa sining. ba? And sining, in many ways, uh, when you put history into art, ba? In many ways, tama yung term kanina eh, you fictionalize a bit. So, uh, you, you made ka na, which is not necessarily a history film, but it's a film about culture and definitely had some history in it, okay? Because of the, uh, yung mga struggle for identity of the Tiboli people. Uh, it's a work of fiction. But when does it become, uh, kasi di ba, a historical narrative in the form of fiction, when does it become a distortion in, when, when it comes to art? Ida. And there's a lot to unpack in that. Um, no. Pero sasabihin ko nga siya na, um, na gaya nga na sinabi ni, um, ni Zuriel, uh, bilang, um, you know, speaking for the um, arts and literature, pwede kong gamitin yung fiction. And um, uh, it's interesting to me, so just in general muna, like I think the role of the arts in historical um, distortion um, is that it creates an emotional memory um, and it's it's somehow a lasting and very powerful memory um, and it gets passed down from generation to generation. We've been doing this since the ancient times of storytelling. Um, so very powerful your platform ng arts in uh, passing down certain truths um, and histories and cultures of of our um, of our nation of our people, um, and in that sense, art can go both ways, um, right. and it can give different perspectives depending on like we always say, um, na you know our stories are told by the victors. 
So uh, we go on passing down what we believe to be true, and then it can get revised or distorted along the way. Um, and it's this lasting memory that we understand of, of who we are. Um, and then what we know of who we are becomes um, like how we understand our, um, our, our present. So uh, yun yung role ng arts. And um, yeah, in, in Canada Dreamweaver, for example, um, I wasn't doing anything like a strictly historical film, but I wanted to preserve a certain um, culture and tradition right. um, of the Tiboli people um, na modern audiences would be able to learn from. And then we understand, we have an, a little bit more understanding of who we are as Filipinos. Um, and then just to add, and we can talk about this um, a little bit more later on, um, my new film is uh, it's a short film which I'm doing um, here in New York. Um, it's called Never Forget. And mm. it deals directly, well, I've been saying historical revisionism because it's yung term sa, sa US. And again, like what I said about art, yung revisionism can go both ways. Nga. Like um, you were mentioning, it could be positive. We do have to revise history if we understand like or discover new things about it, etc. Um, but I, I'll be using historical distortion um, more uh, frequently now. Um, but but yeah, it it tackles topics of um, historical distortion, culture, history, and how that gives us an understanding of our identity. Um, uh, and it deals with Escalante Massacre, uh, which oh. happened during martial law. So you know, backstory in the yeah. film, and then we see how it affects the main character in a more personal level. I cannot wait to watch it. Ano? Uh, talaga naman. Pero alam nyo, di ba, Ida, sinabi mo nga, no? uh, yung fiction kasi in art is used to represent reality. Yeah. Di ba? Parang even if it's fictionalized, it, it represents the essence. For example, if it's a historical film, kaya, kaya kahit na ang film ay art, binabantayan namin yan ng mga historical consultants eh, na hindi lumalayo ang fiction doon sa representation ng reality. Pero dito, baligtad. Di ba? Ginagamit ang history to fictionalize <laughs> uh, what really happened at that time. Ano? And again, marami yan. Ah. I, we, we will dig deeper later on, on, on why is that and, uh, and about, you know, uh, ano bang at, at stake dito. But for Regine, na talaga lumubog doon sa mundo ng mga troll farms and all of that. And by the way, we're not saying na troll lahat ng mga tao na, so, na sumusuporta for certain candidates. no. But you know, it takes, you know, trolling, you know, PR trolling, that means yung, yung talagang uh, systematized to sow the seeds of disinformation. Now, aside from, aside from asking you the question, what comes to mind about historic, uh, when, you, when you talk about historical revisionism or, or historical distortion. Uh, Regine, do these people know na, na, yun, na willfully ginagawa talaga nila yung historical distortion na yan? Di ba? Alam ba nila, alam ba nila na ginagawa nila yun? O tabaho lang it, or whatever. whatever. That's a very good question, Prof. Chow. Siguro simulan ko na rin doon sa wording no, ng distortion. And I think it is definitely a more accurate um, word choice for what is happening now than revisionism. Although, admittedly, revisionism is the word that is used in the media. Um, but when I first heard that word from a YouTube researcher, Pate Magal, um, definitely it seemed that to hit the point more because a lot right. of what we see like on YouTube, for example, hindi siya outright denialism, for example, of martial law. But it's a kind of twisted reasoning where they say, oh, martial law was merited. You know? So but it's not the same exactly as, for example, Holocaust denial, di ba? Um, and yeah. the word distortion, to me, yung image niya is kind of like if you're running history through a lens or a twisted, a funhouse mirror, a twisted mirror where the reflection isn't accurate. And that's exactly what you see when you dive into the disinformation echo chambers in social media, sa TikTok, sa Facebook, etc. Because it's really like there is an alternative universe no, where people 
do not believe the court documents, the evidence of the ill-gotten wealth, but they will believe um, not all this, not the, not the paper trail and not the money trail that has been historically proven, but they will believe an abstract concept like Italiano gold. So, yun, it's curious nun for me, and I definitely agree that um, that distortion has somehow taken a hold. But it's like a upside down, no? um, and like a parallel universe. Now, do these people know that what they're doing is um, part of historical distortion? Um, from what I've experienced, because most of the operations that I've spoken to have been um, white hat operations, or hindi masyadong smear campaigns, mas, mas positive leaning, and then they just inform us na ibang team yung gumagawa ng smear campaigns, ng, ng black op, etc. Um, but from what I've gathered, um, in the one case where I was able to speak to an influencer na pro-Marcos, um, sinabi niya, Marcos was really the client. No? Um, parang trabaho lang. But also, naniniwala talaga siya dun sa kandidato. Um, mm. Naniniwala talaga siya na, you know, like we should kind of, ano, he's, he's not his father. You know, those typical arguments. So, um, according to a uh, political strategist that I spoke to, and these are the guys naman who, who are not in the province, but who um, are the head honchos no, of these kinds of operations. Um, but this is a political strategist who doesn't really delve into, you know, black box so much, um, at least according to what he, he said to me, no? Pero sabi niya that a lot of rank and file trolls, no? Um, parang they don't really, um, have a grasp, siguro, or an existential, um, wala silang masyadong existential from this observation. Uh, mm. questioning of the kind of work that they do. And to be honest with you, I can't, definitely will need more interviews. And I think there's a researcher, um, uh, there's an academic, Jonathan Ong, who might be able to speak about this more at length. No? Right. Um, he has a podcast, more podcast. But um, if you look at the labor, kasi, uh, the Philippines is very, we have a young digital worker labor force. People, the same people who go to BPOs, again. Um, and these people are overworked, they're underpaid, they're looking to make a big buck so that they can survive in this hellscape that is our country, right? So um, definitely, but we cannot blame uh, rank and file, I guess, individual workers, if they're kind of looking to make uh, a living, siguro. Um, right. Yeah, it's, a, it's more, com- it, there are a lot of complicating factors. All right. Um, well, now that we have the groundwork for, you know, the what we understand about historical distortion and, you know, yung iba't ibang views natin based on, on the work that we have done, I will direct each question to one panelist, but you, if you want to follow up, please do so. Okay, so unahin ko si Zuriel, ano, for my next question. Um, based on, on your study, of course, your study is about, you know, the correlation between the removal of high school Philippine history no ah uh, by the way we have to talk kasi kausap ko na yung DepEd ngayon yung Bureau of Curriculum and i want to i want to give them your paper ah uh, kasi yan ang bone of contention eh. if if it, if all of this is really if there is a correlation because for for them or for us kahit sa akin i haven't seen your paper no uh, that is something na that is still up for study no, but uh, I believe that you have data to show us, and we can talk about that later. But uh, yung para sa you as a historian, what causes historical distortion? Is this related to class politics? Inter is intersectoral ba siya? Kasi some people would say, oh, I'm vulnerable sa fake fake history. Ay yung mga mahihirap, di ba? May mga ganun bang ganun lang ba yon? Parang tama ba yon na ganyan? Isisi lang natin na mahirap lang ang nape-fake history. Uh, what can you say about this? Uh, actually, just to give a, a background about my paper. So, it was written during the pandemic. It's about, mm. um, relate ko yung pagtanggal ng Philippine history sa high school. And mm. sumakto, it's an unintended consequence na unintended. grabe rampant yung fake news since um 2016 um actually before that um 
based sa bago ko study, ang pinaka matagal ang trace ko, it's before pa sa age talaga siya ng TikTok or YouTube na meron tayo ngayon. Um, mm. Kung familiar kayo yung may lumabas na YouTube video about the Aquinos in 2011. Pinoy Market Pride 2011. Yeah, I was the yeah, very yeah. first one. I was the very <laughs> first historian to answer that and hence, I was the very first historian to be trolled. Mm. Totoo uh, yan. I mean, social media. Oh. For me, that's one of sabi na natin biggest uh, shock na nangyari when it comes to our history. Kasi ang ganda ng production ng video, uh, talagang trinase niya during the Philippine-American War. It involves General Luna, various um, people in our history. So talagang lahat twinis yung, yung facts, dinistort yung facts. Then ako yung sa Sorry, Zuriel. Was... Sorry, Zuriel yeah. You know why it's effective? It's, sorry. It's effective because no, yung ating, yung, yung the way it was produced was it mixes real history yeah, yeah, yeah. Diba? and yung distortion which is makes it more believable as far yes, as I'm yes. concerned. Diba? Oh. So, it all started there after watching the video. Sabi ko, kailan ba nag-start? Uh, ito talaga. So, you know, as researchers, as a history major, talagang trinays ko. Bakit grabe yung hate sa Aquinos? And kung mas, uh, we will dig deeper pa, yung mas, mas nauna na mga narratives is laging pinaglalaban yung Aquino at yung Marcoses. Sabi ko, mm. paano din nag-start yung gantong klase? To the point na binalik ako hanggang 1970s. Mm. We're in, uh, it's still not distortion, I don't want to use the term distortion, but more for reconstruction of history. Or in kung saan nagsimula, for example, at ang magandang starting point is yung malakas and maganda ni uh, President yeah. Marcos at ni uh, Imelda. Um, then, sunod-sunod na, you have the Tadahana Project, then you have mm-hmm. very, uh, or so many myths na during Marshall or during the Marcos period ay naniwala na talaga yung mga tao na ito. And um, Siguro, uh, hindi natin pwede sabihin exactly, Professor Chua, na dahil lang tinanggal yung Philippine history, mas naging vulnerable yung mga estudyante. Pero before pa talaga sa pagtanggal ng history, hindi lang din siya isang class issue. Eh. Hindi lang basta dahil yung mga uneducated, madali silang, dahil wala silang critical thinking skills. Kasi mismo, sa mga teachers, we have uh, fellow teachers who are Marcos loyalists. Mm-hmm. We have... Um, Say a set of intellectuals who are Marcos loyalists. Ang naging problema is hindi natin napigilan ito mga ito after the Dutch Revolution. And generally papasok yung debate o yung diskurso na nagkulang na naman ng edukasyon sa paggawa ng right curriculum, si mga textbook writers, ganyan ganyan. Pero kung titingnan talaga natin, it's because mismo yung mga narratives na ito ay hindi nabura sa sa diskurso. Mismong yung mga Marcos loyalists na mga teachers, yung mga intellectuals na to, even have some columnists who so very uh, relaxed about the Marshall period. Sobrang dami. Sobrang daming um, papasok dito. Hindi lang siya basta sa history. Papasok na din sa usaping media, papasok na rin sa usaping uh, edukasyon. Lahat. And may interpret ko siya kas- kasalukuyan na hindi na talaga ito maipipigilan. Talagang oh. makakahirap na ang pigilan. And alam niyo naman, Professor Chua, na um, iilan lang din sa atin ang mga public historians, katulad mo, katulad ni Professor Ambet Ocampo, na hindi na din siguro alam ang gagawin paano uh, yeah. i-correct ang nagbabalok na kasaysayan <laughs> natin. So, uh, it's not only a, a class issue. It's not only, uh, say, problema nating mga teacher sa kasaysayan pero napakadami ng branches talaga sa kasalukuyan eh, na panahon. Now, a- a- across the board yan eh, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa mahirap lang eh kasi yung OFWs na talagang meron namang edukasyon at may mga kaalaman talaga. Eh, and people who have actually learned, may makilala nga akong UP students, where my students are staunch supporters of Bongbong Marcos. ba? Now, again, this is a very general 
um, historical distortion discussion except that, of course, ang malaganap ngayon at dahil election ay napag-uusapan natin ang mga Marcos. Now, um, nandiyan din, it comes to play din yung issue of freedom of expression. Now, again, hindi, na, hindi talaga... Uh, kasi, Zuriel, we really should not have a problem if someone is a Marcos loyalist, kahit historian ka. Wala tayong problema doon. As long as you do not deny certain things. Diba? I correct, mean, you can correct. go as far as say na may mga magbabuting initiative si Marcos, which, for, in all fairness to me, I have done with my master's thesis on Imelda Marcos. Diba? But, again, there are like non-negotiables, like, you know, the plunder, the cases, the human correct, rights correct. violations perpetuated. It doesn't have to be ordered by Marcos himself, but, you know, he allowed an mm -hmm. environment that has impunity on these matters. No? So, you, you sinasabi natin, hindi po natin sinasabi na historians dapat anti-Marcos lang. Walang ganun. Mm -hmm. Walang ganun. Pero sinasabi natin, may mga bagay na negotiable when it comes to history. Nasa poster natin si Aguinaldo, ganun din. Diba? Hindi ko mo kampi ka kay Aguinaldo, hindi ka na pwedeng maging historian. Ang sinasabi lang natin, huwag mong i-deny yun ang mga ibang maling ginawa niya. Diba? Ganun po yung sinasabi natin. Now, Ida, of course, um, uh, may, you have thoughts on this? On on yung, uh, what causes this historical distortion? Um, yeah, like, definitely um, martial law comes to mind, martial law poets and um, artists. And um, habang nag-uusap kayo, naisip ko yung um, kind of the duality um of art and distortion um na usually like not just in martial law but difficult times war um and for example uh it, so the dark difficult times in our history give birth to art and um pumapasok dyan yung like um silencing of the media and and censorship and um in some cases art becomes our only source of the truth um right and it uses um, either, you know, metaphors or or stories um, to to reflect a certain um, aspect of truth that we still want to come across, um, even if you know, uh, stating fact would be difficult in a time of, of censorship, for example. Um, so so you know, made made duality in the sense that art and artists are pushed to tell the truth through art. Um, during you know difficult times, and then also people in power um, eh, are able to harness the power of art uh, right. through propaganda, for example. And then again, may duality in propaganda. Gumagawa sila ng sarili nilang um, films or literature. Um, you know, debatable if that's art or not, but um, yeah, I mean, art and the lack of it, Ida, no? Art and the lack of it. Exactly. Right? Because it's like, art pa ba ito? Exactly. It's really tasteless, but you know, it, it works. So yeah. that's it. The word, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but but they know that you know, presenting it as a work of art um has a certain impact on the audience. Now, um, uh, this is. This, this reminds me of discussion that I had with one of my um, professors here in New York. Na, um, he was telling us that when we watch a film, the parts of our brain that are active are that of emotion and memory. So in a sense, um, or, and if we watch uh, a film enough, if I guess we, we read a book enough, um, dahil nag activate yung memory part of our brain, um, in a sense, our brain kind of takes that um, film that we're watching and somehow we think or believe and feel that it was a real memory that we had. So um, in that sense, the subliminal aspect in your art of, of being able to distort um, our, our memory or our understanding. Um, and that is a power that is harnessed both ways, um, whether for truth or for propaganda. Well, it's good that you already. Um, na, na, ano mo na, that's my ne my next question. Actually, is is on that. Eh? How we you weaponize art, eh? diba? Uh, which which is what this is what's happening now. Weaponization. Uh, we tackle that. Uh, another colleague of mine from the University of De, De La Salle University, Ivani Biernas. 
we are always talking about the weaponization of history. No? Under the Duterte administration, he did that against the Americans. Remember the Battle of Pudao? Diba? Inaano niya yan. Gusto-gusto niya yan. Yung minasakir ng mga Amerikano yung mga tausog. No? Because he wanted to send a message. You use history. And now, of course, itong... itong ano, no? na, kasi, before I get to Regine, remember that we are all in the... We, we, we are here because there was people power. Diba? The Marcos has ousted people power. Now, remember that in 2010... Or in 2009, di ba? Far away from people power, politics, although all the presidents use this rhetoric, di ba? Si FBI was lakas ng tao, era para sa mahira, di ba? Eh, ano nangyari? Eh, what happened was, di ba? Gloria, Edsa, Edsa, Dos at Edsa, Pangulo ng Edsa, Dos at Edsa, Tres, di ba? Pero what happened was, when people wanted an alternative to Gloria, a concept of alternative to Gloria after nine years of being president, di ba? Namatay si Tita Cory. Namatay si Tita Cory. Di ba? Ano nangyari eh? You have to na-highlight na- ngayon si, Bong, si, si, si Noy Noy Aquino and he was elevated because of the merits, not just of his own merits, but the merits especially of his parents, di ba? So you have to bring out that narrative again, people power, which of course will hurt the Marcoses, even if they're already a senator or local officials. And by 2014, ito na ngayon, ay 2014, 15, 16, on the lead up to the elections, makikita mo na from 2011, in fact, no? dahil nasaktan yung people power narrative, yung Marcos narrative, na nananahimik actually, dahil parang established na yan eh. Diktador sila, na-out sila, no, may mga masamang nangyari. By the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, that was already an established fact. Parang, parang tayo naman, parang hayaan na natin yun, alam na ng tao yun. Huwag na natin, you know, huwag na natin budburan pa ng asin yan kasi masyado ng bengatibo. Hindi naman tayo bengatibo eh. Di ba? Eh, ang problema, eto na ngayon. Because they were hurt by the people power narrative. They're surfacing because of noy-noy. Eto na ngayon. They have to counter narrative. But they have to really turn it around so that they can they can ano, they can succeed and they have been continuously doing that until today it's 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 like you know a process of misinformation diba now Regine, I, I have to ask you no um kasi that's a media ka eh, and you can you can comment on the other uh, points raised pero being in the media uh did you see this happening like Kasi kami, historian, you have an artist. In the media, you're in the forefront of, 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 of information every single day. Diba? Uh, ano to? Ano, ano nangyari sa atin uh, in the perspective of the media? Um, definitely, it's been a confluence of so many factors. Diba? I mentioned right. that earlier, yung education, that's just, that's just one factor. Um, the fact na hindi nata translate sa education curriculum natin yung historical trauma, tsaka yung collective memory. Pero right. one thing also, I think, is the failure also of the media as well. Um, mm. Hindi kasi nakapag-migrate ng mabilis yung traditional media sa mga bagong platforms. So basically, propagandas beat us to it. They beat us to TikTok, to YouTube. Um, they were able to plant this information there early. Um, and basically, that kind of content is basically dominant already on the platform. While there is not enough academic, um, right. enter- academic, um, informative, factual, but also entertaining and engaging um, content and, there. So, diba? Regina, so, so Regina, oh, sorry, I have to cut you because gusto ko lang ano to, gusto ko lang ipakita ito, no? Na tama ka eh sa YouTube na una sila, na una. Nauna, nauna sila. Yeah. So, remember, na, meron naman tayo dyan sa mga mainstream media. Pinapalabas sa, di, sa terrestrial TV, which is of course yung TV na may antena and all and the cable, which of course you have to, it's a commercial thing. And that's why by copyright, you cannot put it in YouTube. Magaganda naman yung content, but they're not in YouTube. They're not oh. in TikTok. Because yeah. of copyright reasons. And even today, it's very hard to see those kinds of content kasi yung mga lalo na yung mga luma, hindi naman pinopost ng ABS-CBN o kaya ng GMA, di ba? So, and talo talaga tayo dyan. Of course. Tsaka, 
gusto ko rin ibang gets her eh. Kasi, for example, yung algorithm, tsaka yung language ng pa. TikTok, di ba? Iba siya sa YouTube kasi mas long-form video yung YouTube. Pag TikTok, dapat mas, parang, I guess, uh, pop music, you run it. It's mas short siya, di ba? Um, funnier, punchier content, no? Um, so, yung i-upload mong content sa YouTube, dapat iba yon sa TikTok, di ba? Or parang i-edit mo ng slide, right? And that requires labor, which a lot right. of media workers, kasi they're spread thin, di ba? Parang kung multimedia producer ka, rank and file kang, um, rank and file kang digital producer, you're the one attending to all the platforms. Pero I guess right. with troll farms or with the machinery, the disinformation machinery, it's not like that. Um, they, be, they have a full-time job na yun lang yung ginagawa nila. Um, but with media, you're writing your reports, you are live tweeting, you are posting on Facebook, you are fi- posting on TikTok, etc. So parang you're, you're too spread thin. So kaya mahirap din for, for media workers to kind of catch up. So our model really has to adjust also to theirs, no? So that it can compete. Um, siguro another thing, no, Sir Chow, um, in terms of kung bakit hindi siyang na, na-translate, no, another failure. So we talked about education, um, mm. the media, but of course, may failure din of institutions dito. A lot of people now yes. are asking, di ba? Na parang, they use the reasoning that the Marcos has never went to jail as proof yes. that he yung court cases. But when we actually see the court cases, some of them with final decisions, di ba? And we know there is a calculation of the rough number, of uh, a rough amount of the ill-gotten wealth, right? But somehow that is um, still questionable for some people kasi hindi naging concrete yung punishment. No? Ayun. Dagdagan ko, Regina, no? Failure of institutions, not just on this Marcos issue and all of the issues before, but in general, eh. Kasi remember, EDSA happened. Diba? And Edsa was like, diba? Naging langit itong bahagi ng mundo and all the promise of good life. No? And first, of course, it's the academics and the left, perhaps. The Philippine left were the first to demonize Edsa. It's, they, we said, we, we, we. Diba? We said it failed. Una pa tayo nagsabi. Even after Edsa, we said Edsa failed. Oh, I blame myself. I blame other people. Who said, don't palang, EDSA failed. Which is a reality in a way true. But without giving it, you know, giving it context and giving it, you know, the 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 context and yung tinatawag na. Kasi nag, 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 nagtagumpay tayo sa EDSA. We won in EDSA. Napatalsik natin ang diktador doon. What happened after EDSA is another story. Diba? Now, of course, because EDSA narrative is being used every time in politics. Diba? Kailangan banatan yun. Eh, sasabihin lang nila, what happened ba after EDSA? Diba? Did it bring food on the table? Yes, many changes happened after EDSA. Many positive changes. Nakakapag-usap tayo dito. We have freedom of expression, freedom of the press and all. But to balance it, it did not solve a lot of problems. Yan ang problem dyan. It did not solve a lot of our problems. And uh, because of that, people will say, eh, wala naman naging... Ano sa atin ang democracy because the powerful use democracy for themselves. The the powerful use the the justice system. The powerful use the political system for their own benefit. And so people will say, oh, the crime still there. And so we needed a strong man rule again. So, ganito yan eh. Uh, answering disinformation and historical distortion is not just a matter of answering with facts. Hindi na ganun. No? Balik mo kami doon sa apat. Di ba? Hindi na yan tungkol lang sa pagsasagot kung facts ito o hindi. Dahil kailangan mapatunayan natin ngayon, may silbi ba yung demokrasya na pangako ng EDSA? Mas mahirap yun na sagutin. Di ba? So, doon tayo nayayari. Now, let's... Ne, nakakatuwa kasi, nakakatuwa din pala yung nakikita mong nagre-react yung mga kausap mo sa... Per, ano to? Eh, eh, first time din ito eh, sa akin eh. Kasi, di ba, usually nagpapatay ng ilaw yung mga... Eh, ng, ng camera yung mga estudyante. Eh. So, nakakatuwa naman. But anyway, no, babalik tayo. Ano? Um, I want to have a historical... For Zuriel, ano? I want to have a historical perspective. 
kung yung ganitong klaseng propaganda, no, distortion or what, has happened before. Yan. O kung meron man sa inyo na may, I, I'm sure you've, you, you have read things, ito may nangyari na no? Uh, for me, siguro biggest example with this is my recent scholarship now with regard to the Blair and Robertson. There are mm-hmm. many... Oh, wow. um, sa ngayon, siya pa rin talaga yung ginagamit ng mga historians pagdating sa primary sources ng Spanish period. Pero may recent scholarship wherein some of the primary sources were mistranslated and some of the primary sources were, sabi na natin, distorted for the sake of it was used as an imperialist tool for the Americans. Yes. And um, ito, for, for me, is one of the basic examples of historical distortion in general. Um, madami pa, madaming uh, part na history natin na even talaga yung mga national heroes natin or yung mga ating mga bayani na nagagawa na iba-ibang storya. And mismo the intellectuals, mismo writers, mis- minsan, minsan mga professors pa mismo, ang nag-exaggerate. For example, mga achievements ng mga bayani nito. Um, And even for politics, halimbawa, yung yes. si Rizal ay hindi pro-revolution o, mm-hmm. o siya ba ay pabor sa, re- o siya ay pabor sa revolution can be used politically. Pero kay Van Zuriel, nagiging sa atin at least, pagka ganito, nagiging kwentong di- discussion lang. Mm-hmm. ba? Diba? In fact, ang iniisip ko nga dyan, when Rizal was being demonized by in the 1960s, di ba na hindi dapat siya national hero and all of that, no? <laughs> Ah, uh, and ngayon nag kaya nga ako yung nag-hope ko eh, huhuhupa din eh. Kasi huhuhupa din naman 'yan eh. 'Di ba? Pero 'yun na nga, uh, at least 'yun po academic disc- wala nang nakikinabang yes. na pamilya politically. Yes. I- y- yung kasi y- yung historical distortion ngayon, may nakikinabang. Yes, political diba? talaga siya. 'Di ba? Yan, yan ang ano diyan. Oo. So pero 'yun, totoo yung sinabi mo. In fact, alam mo ba Zuriel yung 'di ba yung maharlik ka? Mm-hmm. The mistranslation of Maharlika in the Blair and Robertson into noble men. Yan ang dahilan mm-hmm. kung bakit at tingin natin sa Maharlika, royalty. Eh mm-hmm. ngayon, nagagamit pa sa disinformation. Royal, ano daw yun? Royal kingdom daw yun ng Pilipinas <laughs> noon. But Maharlika is just the preman in Laguna. Not even in Luzon. Laguna lang yan, Maharlika. ba? Diba? And of course, yung isa pang mis- ano ba yung mistranslation dyan? Yung maraming, maraming, maraming mga mistranslation dyan na na yun nga, nagamit. But anyway, uh, ano yan, at least yun, academic. Ito yes, kasing yes. implication nito, mas... Uh, mas sa panahon kasi ngayon, ang discourse or ang discussion na sa social media na eh. Right. Naalala mo, Professor Chua, there are really debates among, for example, the Teodoro Agoncillo, the Vencio Jose debate. Well, Then yeah. you have Milagros Guerrero, Reynaldo Ileto, who are debating okay. on, on journal articles. Tapos naghihintay sila mga, mga five months, six months bago sila Ooh. makasagot. <laughs> May spaces for debate talaga, academic debate. And sa ngayon kasi, lahat may access eh. Ang diskurso ngayon, social media, unang-una, kahit sino pwedeng mag-post. Kahit sino pwedeng gumawa ng narrative nila. And dito mo talaga makikita na hindi lang siya nangyayari talaga sa... Minsan, sa, hindi na siya talaga sa classroom nangyayari lumalabas sa talaga siya sa classroom. And mm-hmm. hanggang ngayon pa rin naman, may mga debate pa rin tayo, sino pa rin ang national hero dapat, si Bonifacio pa rin ba, o si, si Rizal. And mm-hmm. nagbabatuhan pa rin ang kanya-kanyang narratibo with regard to them. And, uh, well, mm-hmm. yeah, sige. Pero mapapak yung public history, eh, di ba? Kaya, mm-hmm. na, it's a challenge because may algorithms ka sila. Now, si Ida, um, baka meron kang naalala, kasi, siyempre, Babanggitin ko na rin kasi lodi natin yung papa mo. Malamang magkwento sa'yo yun, no? Dahil maraming karanasan yan si Doy Del Mundo, Clodoaldo Del Mundo, no? Isang, isang talagang one of our national treasures pagdating sa uh, screenwriting and, and sa literature. Uh, may mga may mga naaalala ka ba based on history? Na, yung art naman, the way art was used, historical films, for example, or something that is related to history. Um, yeah, actually, um, sana nga nandito siya ngayon uh, if we really want some insights on art history and film history. Um, meron kaming 
ginawang project recently uh, yung libro na tungkol sa ang daigdig ng mga api um, it, it was mm-hmm. a film uh, na ngayon wala nang existing copy um, wow. and I think uh, in, in some way like it was related to the content of the film that it was very critical of, of the government um, so in a way it, it was somehow censored even though it won several awards um, some film festival um and so my 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 father wrote this book um and he was working with um Dick Trofeo who had um photos from uh the film and they they didn't have a script but they had the um treatment of of the the, the film so parang ni reconstruct nila yung yung pelikula um using what they had and then using oral history wow. they did um interviews with um with the the uh, living actors and and other crew who were involved in in, in the film, um, and uh, ako yung nag-edit ng libro for some reason. That doesn't mean that I know more about it than, than my dad. But but uh, that just came to mind um, in, in the way na just like with the um, the the accounts and records of history, um, yung tangible copies of a lot of our art um, can be lost and then we, we lose these narratives altogether. And I just wanted to say like throughout the discussion, um, Sir Shao, um, you were uh, mentioning narratives and all of us were mentioning the, the, the word narrative. And um, it goes back to our first discussion on, on fictions. Na, um, whether we're talking about facts, whether we're talking about narratives in media, in history, in, in art, narrative siya. So, paano natin um, i-order or pagsasamasamahin or i- uh, yeah, i-order yung, yung facts, hopefully that they're facts, um, in history to present it in a way that connects with an audience or a reader or a right. reader. Um, and that uh, creating a narrative is is so important in any of the fields that we've been discussing. Tama, narrative building. Again, it's not enough to to a counter historical distortion with facts. I think we're done with that type a- anymore. Sometimes it doesn't work. Pero although we have to still do it. Yeah, alam mo yun din yung natutuhan natin in the past few years eh. Because we were like, you know, yung Taliano na yan. But ko na masasagutin yan, ang pumatol sa Siraulo, eh, Siraulo, mas Siraulo, di ba? Eh, kaya hindi namin pinapatulan yan, eh. Eh, noong pinapaniwalaan na, eh, we have to step in. Di ba? And then parang we regret, dapat noong una palang, binoljak na natin yan, eh. Di ba? Eh, that's why, yun, yun na nga, although it doesn't work all the time, we still have to answer facts with facts, but more than that, narrative building talaga. Ang kailangan natin kasi doon sila magaling. Regine Cabato, your thoughts? Di ba ang galing-galing nila sa narrative building eh? Oo, at nagbibigay siguro ako ng ilang examples, no? Go, um, go on. And just so that you guys have an idea of the kind, the way they prop themselves up and the kind of language that we will have to barter in if we want to compete with that, no? Um, on TikTok, for example, ang dami-dami nilang fan cams. Each member of the Marcos family has a fan cam. So, um, siguro naman, because you guys are Gen Z, uh, mostly siguro mga Gen Z students, no? Um, you guys know what a fan cam is. It's a celebrity edit na usually, di ba, ginagamit natin sa mga actresses, mga K-pop idols, etc. Run through pop music. Tapos, ginagamit yung mga photos nila, videos, etc. Um, each member of the Marcos family, from patriarch, the dictator, down to the Gen Z members, the sons of Bongbong Marcos, meron sila nun. Um... And it kind of props them up in a very reality TV sort of way. So, kung panoorin niya yung vlogs, for example, ni Marcos Jr., parang silang, parang siyang keeping up with the Kardashians because they have these BuzzFeed-like challenges that paint them as a very casual, very um, fun to be with the family. They have a lie detector challenge. They talk about the dating lives of the boys, ganon. They talk about the love, love, love life of... Um, Imelda and Ferdinand, and the love life also of Lisa and Marcos Jr., diba? And then those videos get spliced into smaller bits and then distributed across TikTok by fan accounts. 
And of course, we know given um, how troll farms operate and the machinery behind it, na most likely inauthentic itong mga fan accounts na to. Pero ang laki talaga ng reach. So those are some ways that they, um, you know, uh, build their narrative. They make themselves look casual, make themselves look approachable. But at the same time, you know, because of the nature of the Marcuses, um, ano pa rin, parang gil, hindi siya totally relatable because they're not your everyday family, right? Parang siyang, they live in a really big house, di ba? Parang they speak in English in their, ano, but for some reason, you, you parang, the patok siya probably because it has a kind of reality TV type of appeal. Um, ayon. It's what Sir John Mary calls the celebrification of the Marcos family. And then you have their historical the historical footage no? um, and photos that are taken out of context. Like, for example, the shoes, the no. Um, and then they're edited on TikTok and they run through fun filters to make it look, I guess, cool and aspirational. May isa akong... Correct. Yeah, parang... Cool. May isa, you may make it cool, di ba? Sabi nga nila yung excesses dati nakakapangilabot because you know the context. Mm-hmm. Ang hirap-hirap mm-hmm. ng Pilipinas, pero ito oh. yung mga sapatos nila. Pero hindi ba oh. ngayon, in the celebrity culture, cribs! FTV cribs! Oh, di ba? Parang oh. tipo material girl yung, yung background music sa TikTok, gano'n. Yes. Tapos... Very, ano siya, and when I ever, I explain this to foreign audiences, they're so appalled, no? Because there was really a time in history that these um, excesses were so insanely, ano, diba? Out of touch with reality, and uh, people really found it so insensitive, um, you know, a slap in the face of the Filipino public. Um, pero now, parang nayasify na siya, <laughs> for, for lack of a better word. For nayasify. <laughs> Parang the more you show your wealth, the more cool you are. Na wala na yung context ng kahirapan nung panahon na yun. Parang, ay, ang cool-cool ng mga ya- ng nila, di ba? Oh. So, yan, 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 yung, yan yung... Now, of course, the, the next... Ito na yung, of course, the next step, no? Uh, looking, going forward, now... Um, Zuriel, you're probably aware of, uh, you're probably f- more familiar with what we call yung sa, sa Germany halimbawa, uh, di ba? May mga censorship laws about the Nazi era na parang hindi mo pwedeng i-glorify si Adolf Hitler at yung Nazi regime. Uh, do you think we can still do that or or the time is up? <laughs> uh, uh, for me, uh hindi talaga siya mapipigilan. Uh, ah. Grab your algorithms. Kaya ang kailangan natin habulin nga, nabasa ko din kasi yung kay Joran Tan Ong, is yung mga PR people o yung talaga mga masterminds ang gumagawa nito. Sila ang dapat habulin. At the same time, yung mga social media companies, kailangan nilang right. tignan, kasi ako, mismo ako, I have many friends in Facebook, they share ng fake news. Nira report ko. And after a few days, hindi na turn down yung post kahit alam kong napakamali na to. Mismong propaganda. Mm-hmm. So, social media platforms need to check again yung kanilang uh, paano pag-filter nila ng mga gantong bagay. Ito, matagal ko na talagang iniiyak to among friends uh, in discussions. Ang role ng historians and of course, to help Professor Chua in public history, kailangan natin pa na mas madaming public historians. Speaking about narrative, we That's also true. need we also need intellectual spaces. Hindi lang basta TikTok, hindi lang basta Facebook. Kailangan ng historian mas lumabas. Hindi lang dapat mm. sa classroom din. And mm. syempre, laki na nga ng burden sa academic historian sa publish ng papers, yeah. ganito ganyan. Kailangan natin ng public historians na magta-translate ng mga ito for public mm. history. Kasi nangyari sa mga academic historians, tayo-tayo lang nag-uusap. Right. Mm. May, may new published material about, for example, sobrang daming study about the Marcoses. Sobrang daming study about, say, uh, the Martial Law period. Pero ang nag-uusap lang is mga historians, mga academics lang. It's because mm-hmm. we lack public historians and we lack people, uh, we lack intellectual spaces or in mas maibababa siya. Isa pa Alam, example, sorry. Sige, sorry. Sorry mo. Isa pa example. Okay. Oh, um, isa pa dito is For example, sa free TV, wala na tayong uh, 
time or spaces in free TV. Mm. Kung saan mas may papahayag natin itong mga gantong klase ng uh, information. So, you know, the late Gina Lopez Zuriel, di ba? Bayani, nung bata tayo. Naalala mo yun, di ba? Every Saturday. Ay, Zuriel, mas bata ka yata sa akin. So, <laughs> Baka, so, baka sanggol ka pa lang noon. No? Yeah, pero yan, yung gano'n. No? Wala na tayong mga gano'n na mga show. Tatak Pilipino, yung mga gano'n. No? Regine, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah, I was about to, ano, kasi I just wanted to agree with, first of all, with everything Zuriel said, but may nabangit siya kanina about social media platforms, di ba? How we should hold them to account. Kasi hindi effective enough ang kanilang takedown system when it comes yeah. to this information, no? Um, and one of the things that um, we found out in our in the course of reporting on the disinformation machinery is that it's because historical distortion attempts, especially with regard to the Marxists, fall in this gray area. Na ayun, like I mentioned earlier, hindi siya denialism. Um, people can make a disclaimer na I opinion ko to. Therefore, it falls within the range of free speech that social media platforms allow. At hindi siya... Respect my own yun. That, ayun. Respect so, my own yun. Di ba, Regine? Oo. Mahirap talaga siya. And for sure, um, one thing that, you know, one thing that uh, I was speaking about this with Pate Magao, uh, a YouTube researcher, no? Yeah. Uh, in charge of the Digital Pulse Project. And one of the things that she did mention um, was precisely that. Because YouTube did a takedown recently. Sabi nila 400,000 videos down na misinformation. Which a lot of experts will say is a little too late at this point in the election, di ba? Because the, that content was so much for the longest time and it's been there and it's kind of there in people's subconscious already for those who have watched it. At ngayon lang ita take down bago mag-election. I mean, of course, that's welcome, no? But then there are a lot of other stuff that's on YouTube, up on YouTube, that hasn't been taken down. And that is not outright, um, because it's not outright denialism of martial law, denialism of you know the, the excesses or of the crimes that happen under martial law. Um, more of like justifying, for example, ganon, parang yeah. na, oh, these people, for example, deserve to be tortured because they were communists, etc. Parang may mga ganong logic na, Kasi hindi siya may halong truth, supposedly, yeah. or may halong um, opinion aspect na you can say they're making a commentary. Um, social media platforms are not strict about that. Um, yeah, pero, 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 pero regime. Yung thinking, no? But of course, for us, na parang we know it's the, we know the the facts of our local history, di ba? So ang hirap, pero ang hirap regime. talaga. Yeah. Alam mo to eh, lagi ako take down just mentioning the painter from Bavaria na naging dictator sa Europe nung World War II. Ayaw ko nga banggitin dito, baka mawala tayo sa broadcast eh. Although nabanggit ko na siya kanina. Once I post that person, kahit hindi ko naman pinupuri, suspended ako isang linggo. Ay, ako nabanggit ko na naman si, ano, si dictator ako ng painter from Bavaria anak ng baka, na-suspend na naman ako. Pero yung mga nagpapakalat ng Taliano, mga hindi sila na-suspend, bakla. Anyway, uh, bago ako pumunta kay Ida, no? Regine, napakaganda na mga inputs mo. Uh, yung tinatawag natin, ako, gusto kong pasadaan yung kay Zuriel, uh, akala ng mga tao gusto ni Shao Chua na siya lang ang public historian. No! No! Yes. Please, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Dawagdag na kayo, no? Pero kasi syempre, Zoria lang hirap din eh. Yes, First of course, you have to build your name. Hindi ka naman basta, hindi, hindi naman ako pwede basta-basta magsalpak ng bata dyan, di ba? Di ba? Kailangan meron siyang track record para ibigay ko siya sa media. Di ba? And of course, nandyan yung renumeration. When you appear on media like me, like I'm a media, I don't want to wear lasal so I cannot say the word. I'm a media stoop, no? You know, going around, wala naman bayad yan eh. Mm. Diba? So yung renumeration, diba? you, you get your professional services. Sometimes they pay, sometimes they don't. Okay? But uh, may ganyang issues. Kaya nga eh, pag tinitignan nila si Xiao Chua and how burdened he is, probably they will not go to public history. And how attacked. Parang nadidiscover siya, ba't pa ako lalabas? Hindi eh, gaganyan nilang nila ako. 
So, kaya din yun din yung nakikita natin na yung nangyayari ngayon is actually discouraging public historians from going public. Kasi napakasarap naman talaga na magsulat at, at tignan mo naman hindi niya natatapos yung dissertation niya, di ba? Kaka-public history niya. Kasi may nagtatanong sa kanya every hour, may, magsasa- may magtatanong, Sir, paano ba ito? Paano ba ito? And you have to... Wala ko may klapo dyan. But you know, do not blame me for not finishing my PhD. I wanted to serve my people. Di ba? No, Ida, uh, the way forward, what do you think? Um, Idatagdag ko lang uh, before we go to the way forward. Um, or actually, this is part of the way forward, I guess. Um, I, I really agree with um, you must not have been Israel, Chani, Regine. And I want to highlight um, which is part of media, part of art, the arts as well. Um, yeah, accessibility. Like, accessibility is a problem. Right. Yeah. Um, we have these, you know, really good historians. We have like uh, well researched papers on our history, pero hindi siya nagiging accessible sa tao. Um, whether it is because of the platform or the I don't know, intellectual nature of the paper or um, you know, it's not on social media. If it's on free TV, may nanonood ba? Tapos wala, wala na rin free TV na, na programs. So uh, accessibility is a problem, but also a way forward that we can we can work on. Um, and uh, for, for those who are watching who are in communications and media and the arts, uh, do not hanapin yung platform for accessibility um, in in making these important topics and discussions open to a, a wider public and more um, accessible and and relatable also um, nakasing relatable ng mga TikTok or you know um, anything on a social media platform kailangan somehow matapat natin yun and uh, to make it interesting to make it fun to make it sexy. Um, para makinig din yung mga tao. So, doon pumapasok yung entertainment, yung media, yung arts in trying to bridge that gap. Um, so, moving forward, kailangan yung mga nasa field na, na to, tsaka yung mga younger people who um, want to, you know, become filmmakers and, and artists, uh, the responsibility of the content that you you make should always be on your right. mind. Um, na gagamitin natin yung platform na to um, para sa mas, you know, nakakabuti na, na mga mensahe. Talagang yun lang eh, parang kasi they have, you know, they have infinite money to make their content accessible and, ta- and, and very united in talagang yung, ano eh, united front eh. Tayo, iwaiwalay tayo. Tapos wala pang, wala, wala, wala namang mga you know, tuondo. <laughs> It's really a challenge, Ida. Really a challenge. Hindi yeah. ko na pwedeng iwan yung pagtuturo ko, di ba? Para mag-YouTube lang. At hindi naman assured ang iwan ako to ba ako, hindi naman assured magte-trending ako, di ba? Right. It's really, Tito, Tito na ako, Ida eh. Hindi makatulad yung mga millennial pa kayo. <laughs> Nga, uh, yung, yung funding din, uh, Sir Shaw, as you mentioned, sila, they have quite a lot of funding to just throw into all of these things na kala natin you know, ginawa lang sa cellphone or something. It's just a short video, but all of this costs so much money to produce. Um, and I right. think Dean uh, mentioned that earlier also. Um, so, yung mga, um, mga companies or individuals that are able to give funding to back these artists, these media pr- practitioners, these historians, um, to be able to, to make the content accessible to people, those people are very important as well. So, Hopefully, moving forward, ma- ma- realize din yun, the importance of giving funding to um, to history, okay. culture, and accessibility. Pero yun nga, eh, the more pangit, sometimes the more it trends. Eh. Yan ang hirap. Okay. The more pangit, the more bad words. A- ako, ako nga, eh, pag nagmumura ako, doon lang ako nilalike ng mga tao. Ang ganda-ganda, araw-araw, ang ganda-ganda ng content ko. Feeling ko ang ganda. Pero parang pag nagmurant ako, doon lang sila nagahano. So, you know, Ida, hindi lang yung disinformation ang problema eh. Our culture changed. Right. So, At ano din? Nating mali, tama na kayo, cool. Kasama din yung um, ano, audience building sa so, kailangan din natin gawin moving forward. Uh, the openness to 
to debate kasi like you wanna mention right. earlier um because of social media people are not open to debating other topics now it's just ito yung opinion ko mm-hmm. just respect that and and that's it but um we have to build the culture um through education through media right. na open to 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 listen to these important things and be discerning of the media and content that they consume also all of country approach hindi lang historian, hindi lang in-depth ed, hindi lang media, pati mag-uulang, wala, kasama na dyan. By the way, 10 minutes more, no, before our discussion, no, ang dami na, ating mag-tackle, nag-i-enjoy pa lang ako, but, uh, I, I know that you have also have engagement. Pero, uh, gusto ko magkaroon ng, ano, oh, the audio is crackling a little. Am I okay? Can you hear me clearly? Ah, a bit? Oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Ta? Hmm. Ayan. Choppy, sir. Choppy lang. Okay, choppy. Naku, sana okay pa. But anyway, um, 10 minutes more, pero it's, it's, it, ang, ang sarap sana ng i-wish na maubos din yung pera nila doing this. Diba? Sure, But the damage, pera nila. <laughs> and the damage, and I mean, even so, you know, even if, I'm sorry, ano, kasi diba parang, even if Lenny wins, it, it will just stop. It, it will just stop. It will stop. It will, you know, lessen it. Perhaps. Kasi just imagine if the historical distortion ano, continues and that is government funded na. Di ba? Pero, you know, it, 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 whoever wins, the damage has been done. And that's why, kumbaga, Zuriel, Medjin, Ida, our work will not stop. Diba? And even if we get discouraged if whatever the will of the people on December or on May 9, diba? Whatever happens, wag, ang, wag tayong panginaan kahit nakakapangina, diba? Because we really have to, you know, face this. It's it's really, we have to face it squarely in the eye. Diba? But anyway, I'm now going to look at the um, uh, chat. No? We have JP Philbert. Thank you for watching. Patricia Lazaro. Uh, kasama doon sa closure kay BSCBN. Of course, na topic to daw sa disinformation. Uh, Jose Victor Torres, our colleague, Palanca Award winner from the Department of History, had a comment on Zuriel's uh, allusion to the Blair and Robert's conclusion. Uh, it was made by Gloria Cano, who was a pro-Spanish historian. No, I, I know this because yung layan na negra yung ilalabanan ni Kano. Pinagmumukhang daw Spanish. Pinagmumukhang demonyo ng mga Amerikano, yung mga Spanish doon sa Blair and Robertson. So, yun yung kanyang ano, ano dyan. Kay, kay Philippines, hello. No? Uh, mayroon siya ng link na binigay. It was made 10 years ago. Ano kaya? Ito, hindi natin. Uh, Aris Obrad, they are now alter, they now alter their history. We need to join funding for history awareness, especially for younger generation. No, yung mga people. On, nakakaya, alam naman, Ida, meron kasi akong ano eh, di ba? So, alam, ang hirap naman, limos, hindi <laughs> nyo, parang ang nalilimos eh, pagka nagpe-patriot. Di ba? Pero minsan, baka kailangan natin tanggalin yung pride na yun. Epa yung Flores, watching po, um, Pili Bustero, thank you po. No, may mga iba to, kung messages tayo, no? Ay, so, bansapi daw Oh, sobrang choppy. Anyway, see? Yeah, pero, okay, since I'm choppy already, this is the sign, perhaps, that I will now get the final statements about the distortion. Di ba? Pero ito po yung tanong ko. While you are doing your... Or, uh, and I'll start with Jean, and then Zoriel, and then Ida. Huh? Uh, ganito. Ano ang say-say na kasaysayan ngayon? with what we have today when we are facing this historical distortion. Regine. We can't make informed decisions, especially with regards to the election, um, if the truth is not a reality or if we're not grounded in the truth. No? Um, so yun siguro yung masasabi ko talaga na 
that's really at risk. Um, and a lot of experts have been saying that already. Maria Ressa has been warning about it. Na, um, our democracy can't stand if it's not founded on fact and truth. Um, kung bakit ako tumutuloy? Um, siguro because um, uh, I'm not sure, honestly. <laughs> but because I know it's an uphill battle, um, uh, it's, it's really... Uh, really difficult no at syempre nakakapanghinayang because of online attacks and all that um but definitely i think that we're not alone because there are still people out there who appreciate the project of uh, um uh, fighting for our democracy of uh, looking for the truth and siguro one thing that we can do i can say to move forward that's one of the last things um, palagay ko may mga learning lessons tayo na pwedeng mahalongkat dito sa current grassroots campaign. And I say this not in a partisan way or not to endorse any candidate. But because there has been so much creative content that came out of this campaign, a lot of actors, a lot of actresses, musicians, na who have come forward unpaid to come up with their own content um, to uh, talk about... Um, not just a candidate in particular, but also their experiences of history, etc. Um, I'm wondering what we can do to channel that energy um, into retelling our history. Um, and in the words of journalist Sheila Coronel, to rewriting it. Um, not just rewrite as in R-E-W-R, rewrite, but also rewrite as in R-I-G-H-T, rewrite it. Because we allowed it to be distorted the first time around. So we cannot allow that to happen again. Um, but this time, we have to be more creative. We have to produce more engaging content. We have to produce more documentaries. And we have to make sure that this time around, that information is accessible to everyone. Um, so I guess that's the challenge that lies ahead of us. But for me, it took one area for hope, Siguro, is because it is is it actually took the Marcos family decades to build this machine, no? Mm. Um, mm. And although it got the help of social me media algorithms na ang rapid ng deterioration, no? Na collective memory. Um, the fact that there is also momentum that we see a lot of artists throwing their support behind, um, behind creative projects, like um, talking about martial law suddenly, all of a sudden, no? Um, palagay ko that we can tap into that energy um, because all of that happened in such a short time, just the four months of the official of opposition campaign. Um, so the question now is if we're going to continue that um, and use it in restoring the trust in the media and restoring our sense of history. Um, and it seems that we can do it, um, but we have to make sure that we don't run out of energy. All right. Sige. Alam nyo kanina ko pa sinati. Thank you so much, Regina. No? Salamat sa participation mo. At least we're able to get into the world of, you know, the people na kaharap natin. ba? And uh, the, the hate, the disinformation, and also, of course, the alternative perspective that they offered us. Kasi hindi naman natin nire-reject. Como po, Marcos, hindi naman natin nire-reject yun eh. Diba? Now, um, I will read Kasi ngayon lang lumabas yung mga questions ano? I will read it And maybe Zuriel and Ida can incorporate it In their final statement Statements no? Um, the question here from Dr. Jose Victor Torres uh, what, is the what if the reverse happens? What if the distortion we tried to fix And it turns out to be true? Uh, although ang sagot ko naman dyan If it is a distortion it is ne it, the, it was na never evidence based in the first place. Then it cannot be true. I, I think I could yun na lang siguro. Maybe what he's saying if the different perspective or alternative perspective turns out to be true, but if it is a distortion, it is a distortion, de ba? Aba kayo ng ibig sabihin ni Dr. Torres. Thank you, sir. And then, of course, do the methods of historical distortion applied in the Philippines differ from ones done overseas, particularly in Southeast Asia? That's one question. Uh, Nag-answer na yung examples of art weaponized in order to distort history by Ida. But the last question, oh, ang dami. Okay, uh, with the rampant distortion happening now, ito na. 
What's your final message to the Filipino voters for May 9? Yo, ang ganda naman Kiana Dizon. Ang ganda-ganda. Sige po. Ah, ida ah, yun na yeah. Alright, all right. Um for me it's the same, Professor Chua. Uh we need to to tap more young blood uh historians or budding historians na pumunta dun sa truck ng public history. Uh, let's help mm-hmm. Professor Chua, let's help uh, Professor Ambeto Campo, and even ata, ibang academic historians ngayon are putting up their TikTok account just to, to, to counter this historical di- disinformation. I think it's high time for new breed of history majors to enter public history. We need history majors, or not only history majors, but students of history who are interested uh, in sa kasaysayan natin na mag-produce ng mga content, uh, online, uh, mag-produce, um, pumunta sa, sa media to write more about history. Because if you check uh, other nations, grabe talaga yung discussion nila with history. It's all over. It's on magazine, nasa newspapers, and even yung mga magazines nila are being translated into to, to online platforms. So ito kailangan natin. Again, matagal ko na sinasabi to, we need intellectual spaces. And we also need historians, public historians, na magtatanslate nung gawa ng mga academic his- uh, historians for the public. Kasi isipin na lang, for example, Professor Chu is already an academic historian and at the same time, a public historian. So dalawa ngayon yung kanyang trabaho. Maliban sa pagtuturo inside the classroom, sa pagre-research, sa pag-a-attend ng uh, mga lectures uh, like this to host events siya pa mismo yung lumalapit sa publiko para explain to mga bagay na to. I think uh, it should be uh, two groups. We have academic historians and we have public historians. We'll work together uh, para malabanan tong historical distortion. As of now, we cannot counter uh, historical distortion. Hindi na talaga siya mapipigilan dahil grabe, grabe na talaga yung algorithms. Again, we need to you know, katokin pa yung social media platforms and recently nga nabasa ko ang isa daw reason talaga bakit hindi siya napigilan is because of the invention of the share and the retweet button na ngayon kasi magpost ka lang uh, kahit wala ka ng caption may picture ka lang dyan in, with information share, share, share retweet, retweet, retweet kaya kumakalat ng mabilis um, it should be an effort from all sectors um, hindi lang basta siya sa government hindi lang basta sa educational sector, lahat dapat ay gumawa ng paraan para malabanan tong historical distortion. Yun po siguro ang final message para sa lahat. Um, salamat, Zuriel, that I met you today. And uh, mag-usap tayo, I'll, I'll contact you kasi uh, we need people like you na isasama ko sa listahan ko, oy, ABS-CBN, may gustong interviewin. Higin natin kay Zuriel. <laughs> Uh, of course, of course, only when you are available. Uh, walang pressure yan. Uh, but it's really a sacrifice to be a public historian in the Philippines. In, in, in the US, there is money when you do public history. Here, meron naman, kaunti, di ba? Makakabuhay naman ng, magpapakain naman ng kaunti, di ba? But uh, it's really a life of sacrifice. And that's why I salute people like you who support the work that we do. No, kasama si na Regine, who are our two tellers in journalism naman. Di ba? Eh punta tayo ngayon kay Ida. Oh, our our filmmaker, international internationally <laughs> known filmmaker. No? Salamat um, Ida for being here. Thank you. Yeah, this was such a an interesting discussion. Um may I share lang ako na poem na very short ke um Eman Lakaba na isang martial law era poet. Oh yes. Um, so his poem, it's just very short. It's um, in puddles and rivers, pebbles hit bull's eyes before targets are drawn. Um, so I think to answer the question um, earlier na anyong advice sa mga boboto uh, na yung May 9, isipin natin yung ripples na nagagawa ng isang decision. And also the ripples and effects of history and it's only through knowing our history that we can make informed and um, proper decisions for our future 
Uh, so understanding how important knowing your history is, is important and understanding how your role in creating these ripples throughout the future is also important. And um, isang very important na pebble na meron tayo that we can create ripples with is this election and your vote. Um, when it comes to be to art, um, so we're tangentially uh, answering your, your question, Dr. Torres, through like art and literature. Um, I think artists are um, aware that our story is constantly evolving. Right. And um, like Sabini Bertolt Brecht, um, art is not a mirror. Um, to, that reflects society. It is a, a hammer with which we shape it, something like that. I'm not researching exact words, but um, you know the the, the um, way that we we create art not only reflects what we know from the past or what has been said about the past, but we have the the power also to to create and to shape um, a culture. Uh, so. Yung mga na na um, aspiring artists and filmmakers. Again, the responsibility of creating those ripples throughout um, th throughout uh, the future with with the work that you do is important. Um, for everyone, be discerning of the content that we are consuming. Uh, be mindful if you are in media, if you're an artist, be mindful of the content that you are putting out as well. Um, and I guess. Um, how are we going to continue this narrative? Um, and what story are we going to tell? And in the future, what story are the historians and the artists and the writers going to tell about us um, and what we did? And will you be proud of the narrative that you are creating? Um, and will you be proud to be part of the story that um, you're part of right now? Wow, thank you, Ida. Maraming salamat. Um, I would like to request to join us in the panel uh, para naman makasama din siya sa frame and to really thank the organizers. Si Queenie, Queenie, Queenie V, please uh, join us. I would like to uh, give my uh, summation with you present because I will turn the floor to you as well. Uh, first of all, we we found out in this forum with oh, very informative. Uh, I like learning from people na, that lagi lang ako nagsasalita. So I, I I thank them and fresh perspectives and you know as 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 they said this uh, uh, the historical disinformation is it, it it was not caused although of course empowered by uh, a certain sector of our society is actually. Uh, rooted in many many things it's a societal uh root, societal lang roots niyan so hindi rin easy ang solutions we need an all of country approach because the damage has been done oh uh, this hindi yan hindi rin yan bago it has been done before Pro propaganda weaponization had happened before diba? even our heroes used history to weaponize it against the spaniards Diba? And you know, in, 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 kung nation building ang iyong track, minsan din justify mo yung nation building. Ngayon naman political comeback or whatever political means. It has been done before. So hindi ito bago. Of course, ang bago dyan, the, te the technology. Hindi rin ito nagsimula na parang putok sa buho. No? Ito ay talagang, ano lang ito, talagang uh, it's years na na develop natin. Yan ang summary diyan. Pero yun na nga, my takeaway is this. Hindi totoong ayaw natin ng ibang perspective about history. In fact, history is really always contested. Pero hindi naman yung contestation ng issue dito eh. Hindi lang yung distortion eh, hindi lang naman din distort eh. Pinaboy yung ating craft. Pinaboy yung ating uh, yung pagkatao mismo ng historyador. Yung media, binaboy. Sinabi, hindi sila nagsasabi ng totoo. Guro ng kasaysayan, binaboy kasi hindi nagsasabi ng totoo. We, tayo po, in, tayo inaapakan, niyuyurakan dito, mga kaibigan. Ang disiplina ng kasaysayan ang niyuyurakan dito. 
So, paano pa magkakasaysay ang kasaysayan kung ang disiplina natin ni Yorakan? Anong klaseng edukasyon ang itatayo mo kung ang mga guru mo ay pinatay mo ng kredibilidad sa mga tao? I think yun ang issue dito, mga kaibigan. Oh? Kaya nga po, hindi totoo na ayaw natin ng other perspectives. Pwede yan. Challenging perspectives. Gusto ng kasaysayan yan. Gusto ng istorya to. Pero yung nangyari sa atin, diniscredit talaga tayo. Oh? Yan po. Pero sabi nga ni Andres Bonifacio, no? matakot sa kasaysayan pagkat walang lihim na di nahahayag. Diba? So kahit na po iniimbento ang kasaysayan, sa palagay ko, the evidence will still remain. And that's why, in the DLSU History Department, Gwen, you know naman, we are, pinapalakas natin yung public history. And ito yung, yung mga produkto ng ating minor in public history, no, Gwen, masaya ako, yung mga naging produkto. Bata pa sila, kakagraduate lang. They are now at the forefront in the fight in public history today. Very visible sila. No? Alam nila yung risks kasi nasabihan na sila anong risks, how to do it. Kaya pinapalakas natin dito sa DLSU History Department, isa sa strengths natin ang public history. Kaya Gwen, uh, back to you and I thank you for the opportunity. I thank Sociedad de Historia for having this kind of relevant talk. No? Lalo na at tatlong araw na lang, we are at the crossroads of our history. Where we're going to choose what version of history happened a few years ago.